My new flyer is out, and this one covers April, May, and June of 2023. Over the past maybe six or eight months, a lot of people have been telling me, hey, you should carry top-down diagnostic equipment. Now, I'd never heard of this company. I may have gotten the solicitation by email from them. I don't know, a while back. And I, I, I get that a lot from Chinese companies that want me to, to say good things about their products that they sell on Amazon. And I have no interest in doing that. That's not in my interest. It's not in your interest. So I don't even reply. I just, I just put it in spam and let it go. And I had no intention of carrying Topped On because I don't know anything about them. I didn't have any inroads to them. I don't have a distributor that carries it. I'm not going to strike up a relationship specifically with one company just to sell diagnostic equipment that, quite honestly, I don't sell a lot of, especially when there's perfectly good products on the market already in the U.S., like Autel, Launch, Bosch, OTC, and those other, those other brands. And all of a sudden, in this flyer, is... Topped on diagnostic equipment. So it looks like my distributor is carrying Topped on now. I can't tell you the first thing about it, but there's a whole page and a half dedicated to their products. Here is their Phoenix Elite scanner. I can't tell you much about it other than what it says here in the bullet points. But I thought it was interesting that now I have access to this brand. And there is a potential to kind of reach saturation on your options. And I think this is kind of like that, where I have access to so many brands of diagnostic tools. At some point, you just got to throw your hands up and say, I don't know, let's just pick one and go with it. Because there's going to be pros and cons for each. Every scanner has holes in coverage for some makes and models. And if you're already familiar with one platform, there isn't a lot of reason to change that platform because that familiarity means a lot. It's... These are computers, so it's like going from a Windows PC to a Mac, and you have to get used to a whole new interface and a whole new way of navigating and trying to learn how to do the things you already know how to do, but just in a different way. And that's a learning curve a lot of people don't like to go through, myself included, so I can't blame anybody for wanting to stick with what they already know, especially if you're not compelled to change brands. And I don't know what would be compelling about the top-down units to make you want to change. The pricing isn't that great compared to Autel and, and, and Launch, so I don't know that what you're really getting there. But anyway, I thought it was interesting as a point of conversation. If you've had experience with top-down stuff, if you've owned it or used it or know something about it, put it in the comments. I'm, I'm really interested to hear and read what your experiences have been because I don't have any with it, and uh, this would be a good discussion point. New to the market is the Milwaukee M12 band file. This is the this is that belt sander that they have been, I guess, teasing for a while now, and a lot of people were very eager to see this. My understanding is there was a third party attachment that you could get, or they would assemble onto a Milwaukee body. Um, and I guess that was being sold for a while and people liked the idea. Finally, Milwaukee came out with their OEM version of this and there's two different ones that are available. There's 12, uh, rather the half inch wide by 18 inch long and the three inch wide by 13 inch long band files. And that's the regular M12 platform. I'm glad to see that they finally come out with something like this. I have a feeling fabricators are going to be very interested in getting their hands on these. If you need light and who doesn't, and you like stream light and who doesn't, and you like the Stinger 2020, I can understand if you don't because they're kind of expensive, but it's a very good light. And before now, you could have any color you wanted as long as it was black, but now stream light has come out with a red and a blue option for this light. So now you have three choices, black, red, or blue. The pricing's a little high on this one, $274.99 for the light with uh, the charger. I think that there are very good quality alternatives that are much less expensive that you may want to consider. Look at some of the Coast Lights. You've heard me brag about them for years now. I am a Streamlight fan, don't get me wrong, but when it comes down to judging where the value is and what you get for your money, Coast gives you a very good option that you may well want to take into account. I 
was talking to a customer uh, two weeks ago. He asked me about getting him a Streamlight Stinger, and I said, sure, I'd be happy to. But have you considered Coast Lights? He said, well, he said, I, I know that you carry them, but I never really thought much about them. So he comes on the truck, and I'm showing him some of the Coast flashlights that I have that compete very well with the Stingers. They're brighter. They're about half the cost, lifetime warranty, dual power, focusing beam. If you need warranty service, I just hand you a new one. You give me a broken one much faster than sending broken Streamlight products into Streamlight for repair. And like almost everybody else, he said, okay, you convinced me. I'll take the coast. And he did. So when you see that kind of buy-in, it's hard to argue the, the, the advantages that one particular brand has. And Coast does have some advantages. So think about that. In the meantime, if you like the Stinger 2020, and I know guys who do, had to get, happy to get them for you. And uh, they have them in two new colors now. Perhaps you are someone who likes to spend an absurd amount of money on something and then say that you're getting something better simply because it's more expensive and it says the word Snap-on or Matco on it. Such has been the case for a long time with air hammers. Hold on. Hold, wait. I can hear it already. Just let me finish. <laughs> I have sold the Ingersoll 119 Max air hammer kit for many years. You've seen me show you these on, on tool haul videos in the past and their pricing was always around $269.99 and people would invariably comment and say, well, the Mac on one is superior, it's way stronger, the Snap-on one is stronger too. And yes, they are. And I would never argue that. In fact, one of my previous, uh, very recent tool haul videos has the same exact uh, discussion on it. So if you were feeling bad about not spending enough money on an air hammer and you wanted something that was stronger. Well, Ingersoll has finally addressed that with their 135 Max heavy duty air hammer. And this one is $424.99. So we're right up there with Matt going snap on pricing. And it says that it's 15% more powerful and 15% faster than, and I will quote when they say the leading competitive air hammer. I don't know what that is. I wish they'd give me a brand name. Let's call them out. Tell me it's Snap-on or Mac or, I don't know, Air Cat or whoever. I don't know. I don't know who that is. So I, I, I'd like being able to have these discussion points, but I don't on this one. Suffice to say that they have an air hammer, which looks like it has been designed and priced to compete with the Mac and Snap-on air hammer offerings. This one comes with five air hammer chisels and a quick connect chuck, and it has a two-year warranty which I know beats Snap-ons. I, I think Matco was oh, a one-year on theirs, but I'm not sure about that. If you know, please correct me in the, uh, in the comments. Thingersoll has been the de facto in Air Tools for so many years that it's difficult to go wrong buying any of their products. And this one looks like it's going to compete head-to-head -head with the more powerful ones on the market. Now, to my point that I made in my recent tool haul video, it's not necessarily a question of which one is stronger or more powerful. It's simply a question of, is the increase in power worth the extra money to you? And you'll have to answer that same question when you look at this Ingersoll one. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. If it's not, there's some really good alternatives like the 119 Max kit, for example. That's got an excellent hammer for a whole lot less money. And, uh, and this one kind of puts in the same tier as those other brands. We're gonna compare some plastic creepers. This one is from Mueller Cubes for almost $300. You're getting a plastic creeper with a one year warranty. I don't like that very much. And I think that you're paying way too much money for a plastic creeper. Is Mueller a good company? Yeah, they're an excellent company. They have fantastic products of great quality, but that's a lot of money for a plastic creeper. And it's not like it has an articulating head or it's not like it gives you you know, some, some ergonomic advantage that the other brands don't give you. So we're going to compare this to the K-Tool one and the Lyle one. You've seen me compare the Lyle and the K-Tool in the past, and I usually tell you that the value is with the K-Tool on this one. That has not changed. I do believe that that is still the case, but the price has gone up a lot. It was $81.99 on the last flyer cycle, but now the K-Tool Plastic Creeper is $109.99, which I'm kind of bummed out about. But we'll also see some other price increases I am not happy about later on in the flyer. And compare that to the Lyle ones for $149.99. The difference here is the Lyle plastic decks have lifetime warranties on them. The headrests and the casters have no warranty on them. 
But there's a significant price difference here. And if you want to go with a Creeper from K-Tool, not only does it have a higher weight capacity than the Lyle ones, but you're paying $40 less. So there is some value there with the K-Tool brand. Even though the price went up, it is still, of all the ones that you could get through me at least, the best value that I can give you. I've talked about Tool Grid a lot in the past. I love their organizational system. I've done an entire video reviewing their product line. And now I can offer pre-bundled configurations of the grids with wrench or socket kits with them. And I like the fact that they're bundling it all together. Otherwise, it's an a la carte approach where you buy the grid board and then whatever clips that you want. They have the wrench kit that comes with small, medium, large holders, as well as screws and labels. And the socket kit, they've got quarter, three eighths and half inch drive socket holders, screws, metric and Torx labels. I, I like the fact that they're putting these together for, uh, well, you know, selfishly, it's easier to inventory the kits than it is all the individual items. But it's also easier for you if you know that you've got so many sockets you want to organize, boom, there's a kit for you. Or your wrenches, boom, there's a kit for you. And they're, uh, they're, they're such a great quality product, and they make a huge difference in how your drawers look, how easy it is to see what's missing, and how, how quickly you can grab what you need. Big fan of Toolgrid. Dynabraid is arguably top of the heap in air tools. And they have really good die grinders and disc sanders. These units here are 0.3 or 0.5 horsepower, either two or three inch on the disc sander. And the die grinders, different horsepower sizes. And these prices are actually rather good for Dynabraid products. Their stuff is pricier than most because the quality is so good. And anyone who has to use these types of tools for any prolonged period of time, who is familiar with Dynabraid can attest to just how good they are. And this again has the two inch disc sander, the three inch disc sander, the 0 0.3 0 and 0.5 horsepower right angle die grinders, and the 0.3 and 0.5 horsepower straight die grinders. I don't know, there's many tool hauls that I've had that don't show the five piece metric, double-ended, universal ratcheting spline drive wrenches from either Mountain or K-Tool. Uh, years ago, they were under the Monster brand. You can get the same wrench under the Mako name or the Platinum name, and they're all made by one company out of China. Someone told me, I think it's Cabo Tools, if I'm not mistaken, K-A-B-O, I think. And they make these wrench sets for everybody. And everyone just, they just slap their brand on it and ship them to the various companies that buy them. Well, GearWrench came out with something that looks very similar. And I haven't seen this in real life. So I can't tell you exactly what they are. As far as I can tell, these look more like the Easy Red design where they don't have the offset on one end where the, the, the drive side protrudes a little bit to give you a little bit of clearance. Uh, I wish these did because that's what makes those wrenches so popular. If these are flat on both sides, I'm not going to carry them. But if they have the offset, then I'm very interested in them. This is the four-piece standard set for $184.99. And it's about the same price or a little bit less than the Mountain Ones. And I think it's because just looking at the picture, these these appear to me to be more like the easy red ones are a little more stout and they don't have the offset. But I thought it was interesting because as far as I know, it's a brand new product from Gearwrench. I have not seen these before. If you have a non-aerosol spot sprayer, you either have the Titan one or the Sure Shot. Most people just call these Sure Shots as a generic term, but that's the brand name. And Sure Shot has been around a long time. They make very good uh, sprayers but they're a little pricey. And then Titan came out with one that is identical to the Sure Shots that I sell mostly because they're about $10 less and you could get red or blue for a long time. Well, now Titan just came out 
with three new colors, black, orange, and green, all at the same price. And I'll be putting all the new colors now on the truck in my regular inventory so people can have a choice between them at no additional cost. And I'm gonna show you some comparisons between the Titan Sprayer and the Sure Shot one. There's a $10 difference, and looking at the picture, you can see they look really similar, and I can tell you functionally they are. And if you need repair kits from one over the other, or you need to replace the filler cap, you can. They're, they're the same. Um, sure Shot is made in the USA. I think Titan's made in China. Maybe for the $10 difference, it's worth it for you to stay with the Sure Shot, in which case I'm happy to oblige. But if I'm putting something on the truck, I'm usually gonna take the lower cost. Alternative is the quality is the same because a lot of times money is a determining factor for what, what people buy. And most people would opt to take the $10 savings. If they don't, I am happy to get them the Sure Shot one. If you need pocket pry bars, it used to be the only game in town was Mac. Years ago, they had a two-piece set with a curved tip and a straight tip. And it was just as I was getting out of my Mac Tools franchise that they came out with these, and I was jealous because when I became an independent dealer, I couldn't find these things under any brand. Well, now I can find them under three different brands, Lyle, Lang, and Mayhew. These are the brand new Lyle ones. They're kind of short. They're only four and a half inches long, but they have a magnet on the back. And I thought that was a really cool addition because the Mayhew and Lang ones don't have magnets. So I thought, this is a cool, cool little addition. And for $14.49, you get two of them. Compare that to the Mayhew pair for $23.49, which are much longer and don't fit as well in your pocket, or the set from Lang for $20.49 that do fit nicely in your pocket, but no magnet. Between these three brands, you can't go wrong. The Mayhew ones are made in the U.S., and, you know, for all around the same amount of money, within $10, you've got three different choices, different styles, different lengths, magnet, no magnet, whatever you want to do, it's all here. And now we're going to be lousy with mini pocket pry parts where just, just not too long ago, we couldn't get any of them. So that's kind of neat. I like the fact that we're able to provide so many choices. So in addition to the Mayhew and Lang ones that I already put on the truck, I'm gonna start putting the Lyle ones on the truck too. Line them up side by side and let people choose which ones they want. The hot weather's right around the corner and that means you need to equip your shop with evaporative coolers. They're more efficient than air conditioning, way less expensive to run, and Hess Air has some excellent alternatives to the porta cools that you may already know. The pricing on these has gone up in the last few years. Since I started carrying these, they've gone up per unit by a few hundred dollars. I'm kind of bummed out about that. But, you know, it's it's kind of hard to argue the cost when you're dying in your shop and you need some relief from the heat. These do an excellent job of lowering that ambient temperature and blowing cool cooler air on you in your work area. There's a lot of different sizes of these, and they based on the volume of air that they move. So you can get the small one that moves 1,300 cubic feet of air per minute, and then you go up to the 3,100 cubic foot per minute ones, the larger 5,300, and then they have one that moves 11,000 cubic feet per minute. So small, medium, large, whatever ones you want, I think that they offer a much less expensive product than PortaCool does, and honestly, I do not know what the functional differences are. I have not seen great reliability out of the porta cool units. The ones that I do see in shops usually are not, not functioning at all, and they're just sitting off in the corner collecting dust, or they don't run the water pump anymore because that broke, or they're full of mildew and they nasty smelling, so they just run the fan. Well, that's a lot of money to spend on a fan because the porta cool ones will cost you thousands of dollars for, for the medium to larger ones. The Hessian ones are much less expensive and I think that they really are a very good alternative. They're easy to use and easy to manage. About an hour before you're done for the day, switch off the water pump so it doesn't circulate the water down those fins anymore and let the dry air from the fan dry out your cooling fins and you're not gonna get mold or mildew built up in there. You're gonna keep it clean and functioning for a very long time. 
If you're a landscaper or you have to do your own yard work on the weekends after you're done with a busy week in the shop, and yes, we all do, then consider getting the M18 pole saw from Milwaukee or any one of their two chainsaws. They make quick work of cutting up even hardwoods and you can see two videos that I shot, one on that pole saw and one on that M18 hatchet eight inch pruning saw. I was very impressed with how well they worked. I had a nice storm hit a couple of months ago. We have a lot of down branches and trees and my sister and I did the once around my property and just cut everything and it's just a slog now to haul everything and burn it up in my burn pile. So that part's not done, but all the cutting is, and I shot some videos on it so you can see these tools in action, and I was very happy with how they performed. Lots of power. The pole saw has, a, has an attachment to extend it to 10 feet long so you can reach way up and, and knock off any damaged branches or prune back your, your trees uh, from... Uh, from the ground and, and reach a long way up. And then once they're down, you want to cut them up with that M18 hatchet pruning saw. That's a very powerful little motor on that guy. And it cuts through lots of oak. You, you, you If you watch the videos, you'll see that I did a lot of uh, some some tree felling with it and then bucking the trees once, to, once they're on the ground. And I was very pleased. And I thought that, you know, for the size that it is, it's great to be free of gasoline and all the problems that come along with storing gas and maintaining gas motors. Uh, I've run them with their nine amp hour batteries and there's loads of runtime there. One saw I don't own but would love to own, but I know people who do, is a 16 inch chainsaw. That makes quick work of even larger cutting jobs and that one would be more appropriate for working on larger trees, stumps and, and other stubborn things. But uh, if you have just basic homeowner type needs, that hatchet pruning saw is awesome. If you are a professional and you do landscaping, you might want to consider some of these units to add to your arsenal. If you're going to be using stuff for a prolonged period of time and you have a lot of big stuff to cut, you might want to choose gasoline instead of the cordless options here. But still, the battery power has has, uh, has a lot to has a lot going for it, and I think that you'd be wise to at least consider adding these to your tool sets. Astro Pneumatic has an 11 piece half inch drive pinless universal impact socket set. And I thought this was interesting because GearWrench also has a pinless set they called the X-Core set and Mako has a pinless set. Uh, these look similar, but they don't look like exactly the same thing. So I don't know who makes these as opposed to who makes the, uh, the other ones I mentioned. But these are half inch drive and they go from 12 to 24 millimeters. And the price is pretty good at $164.99. I've never sold the Astro Universal sockets, but I have sold a lot of their nano socket sets, which are those stubby sockets that have the hex bolster and the square drive in the back. Those sell all the time. Never seen a broken one. They're very good quality. I'm assuming that these are at least uh, as good a quality as the other Astro sockets I've sold. And you can't beat the price. $164.99. For a set of half inch drive universals, I mean, makes me a little suspicious. But then again, I've never been let down by Astro. So if you own these or you know someone who does, let me know and put in the comments and see what your experiences are. Maybe they're junk. If they are, say so. It'd be great to warn everybody. <laughs> or if they're not, let's spread the word and, uh, and, increase, and increase the market share on these because Astro makes very good air tools and they have a lot of very good products in their lineup. And I really do like their nano sockets. When you need truly pro-grade impact sockets and you don't want to spend the many hundreds of dollars that you can spend on the Snap-on or Mako truck, look at Grey Pneumatic. These are the half-inch drive sets. There's a 13-piece uh, deep set standard. There's a 14-piece deep metric set. There's a 19-piece deep standard set and a 26-piece metric set standard length set. The pricing on here is surprisingly good. I sold the 3 8 drive set to a young fellow not too long ago who came on my truck after he was shopping on the Snap-on truck, and he said, do you have a, a set of 3 8 deep impact sockets for less than $300? I said, yes, I do. I said, there's this $85 set from Grain Pneumatic. He was very happy. 
to buy that one. He is glad he waited and shopped it around, and I was too. Not because I got some business out of it, because it's good for him. And I hate to see people throwing good money after bad. And if you're going to get on the snap-on truck, especially as a young technician, and be convinced that there's no other alternatives, just tap the brakes because there are some very good alternatives. Gray Pneumatic is outstanding in their socket category, as well as Sunex. And I always just compare the two because the quality, I think, is equally good. Pricing is also very good. Depends on what's available and what the pricing's like at the time, which will determine which brand I, I recommend or put on the truck. Right now, the great pneumatic stuff is uh, is looking really good with these kinds of prices. You know, one nineteen ninety nine, one fourteen ninety nine for for a deep set that runs seven sixteenths through inch and a quarter, or a metric set that runs ten through twenty seven. That's a that's a particularly good deal. So I would always encourage people to consider Gray Pneumatic. Just know this about Gray. If you buy their stuff and you need warranty service, you have to go through a dealer. They do not allow you to go to them directly. Factor that into your decision making. By contrast, if you buy SunX, you can go to SunX directly. In fact, they have a program called a Sun Express program where you take a picture of your broken item, attach it to an online form and submit it, and they will send you a new tool. So... Factor that in, what your decision making is, either either one you can't go wrong with quality wise and pricing is, is very good right now. So there's something for you to consider. I show you this as a cautionary tale. This is a three quarter female to half inch male impact socket adapter from K-Tool, $17.99. That's fairly inexpensive for a reducing adapter like this. So I think, and I, I, so I automatically think, wow, that seems like a pretty good deal. It has lifetime warranty on it. It's uh, it's about half the price of of other brands that I carry. So let's take a look. And it says that it pairs up perfectly with standard ratchets. It's an odd thing to say about an impact adapter. And then it says, in the third bullet item, made from high-strength chrome vanadium steel. Let's talk for a second about the metallurgy of an impact tool, like a socket or an adapter. Chrome vanadium steel is what your typical chrome sockets are made out of. And they're the other ones that you use with a hand ratchet. You do not want to put those on impact tools for a lot of reasons, including different retention systems that are incompatible with the tools, all the rest of it. But here's the most important reason. Chrome vanadium steel is harder and more brittle than chromoly steel, which is the steel alloy that's used for impact tools. So if you use chrome vanadium on your impact tool, when it breaks, it shatters and it can fly apart and some can get hurt. You can lose vision in an eye. Uh, so they're really, you really want to avoid using chrome on impact tools for that reason alone. Let alone the fact that they are not intended to be put on the anvil of an impact tool because of the retention system that an impact tool uses as opposed to the ball retainer that you see on a hand ratchet. Okay? So you'd want to use impact grade tools for that. But because this says it's made from chrome vanadium steel and it pairs up perfectly with standard ratchets, I really wonder why it says it's an impact socket adapter. So I called my rep on this and I said, is that a typo that it says chrome vanadium steel? And he said, yes, it is. <laughs> it's a chromoly alloy that they use on these. So I felt better that he said that, but it still says it. It's still a misprint because I asked him that in the last flyer cycle. <laughs> so I really wish that whoever makes their flyers would get their act together and straighten this stuff up because that's an important consideration when you're looking at this stuff. And you may think that, well, it's black, therefore it's impact. That's not necessarily true because while it may just be a typo in this particular instance, there are companies that do have black finishes on their chrome vanadium sockets and adapters. And you may think that you're buying an impact grade tool when in fact you're not. And that is something you absolutely want to be aware of. So when you shop around, make sure you look to see what kind of alloy the tools are made out of. If it's chrome vanadium, it'll say CR-V on it. And if it's chromoly, it'll be CR-MO. 
Look for Chromoly for impact applications and look for Chrome Vanadium for hand tool applications. I think that having a comfortable place to sit while you're working is just as important as wearing eye protection and gloves and hearing protection and respirators because your, your feet, knees, hips, and back will thank you years later if you're sitting comfortably while you're working. And you can spend a lot of money, I think too much money, with some brands of seats and stools. But GearWrench has two very good options whose prices are pretty reasonable. There's a roller seat with magnetic trays on the left. That's for $219.99. That's a very wide, comfortable tractor-style seat with lumbar support and has five removable plastic trays along the base. The casters are fairly large and roll pretty well over an uneven surface, and the seat adjusts from 18 to 22 inches. Extremely comfortable. I use one of these uh, myself. I, <laughs> I bought one for my wife a while back. She uses it in the kitchen. I prefer to sit on it. Uh, if I'm doing stuff in the kitchen, it's so nice to, to it's so it's, it's a nice working height for the table. You can boost it up and work on the counter. You can wheel yourself around on it. It's really handy. And if you want an adjustable height shop stool for $114.99, that's way less money than comparable brands. And I use a, a similar stool to this every day on the truck uh, where I sit at my at my kiosk. And I'm very glad I do because... Before I got a stool like that, my feet were killing me at the end of the day, uh, and I felt it in my knees, I felt it in my back, and now that I have a chance to sit down a little bit every day, I feel much better, healthier, and, and I move around easier than if I wasn't using that, that stool to get that kind of relief on my joints. And I suggest that you do too, because your job is hard on you, and by giving your joints the relief that they need today, you're going to thank yourself for it later on down the line. If you're looking for welding helmets, consider the Shop Iron brand from Titan. They make very good, fairly low cost helmets. I don't have all the specs on these, but I believe they're rated for one thirty thousandths of a second in darkening mode. And there's variable shades from nine to 13. And they also have a grind mode. Both are done through external knobs on the outside of the helmet. And you have this really cool Eagle USA American flag Motif, or if you want to slot it up a little bit, you have these pinup girls on the bottom. Uh, the Both girls are on the same helmet. One's on one side, one's on the other, and they're very suggestively riding bombs and missiles. <laughs> so uh, it's a throwback to World War II pinup girls. I think it's kind of cool. A little, uh, little nostalgia there. I don't know if any of us were around then to appreciate the art from back in the day, but here it is now. And if you want that on your... On your noggin, you go right ahead and get these. $144.99, you're saving a ton of money over some other over some other brands. And while you can get very good ones from Aesop, Miller, and Jackson, you will spend a whole lot more money than you'll spend on these shop iron ones from Titan. All right. <clears throat> Hold on to something. Sit down. Tape your butt closed. Get ready for this one. The three and a half ton floor jacks I have been complaining about for a long time that the pricing has gotten so high as to put them out of reach for most people. Well, <laughs> oh, it's only gotten worse. Not too long ago, these jacks were over $400 and I wouldn't sell them because there's no way I was going to try to sell a jack for $400. But the K-Tool three and a half ton low profile service jack is now seven. I can't say it in, without cracking up. Seven oh nine ninety nine. Oh, that hurts. I, just, I, I don't know why. Is it worth it? No, <laughs> it's not. I, I don't know what to tell you, but good Lord, that's insane. I double checked the price just to make sure this wasn't a typo. It's not a typo. <sighs> My cost on these jacks is now so high, it's prohibitive for me to even stock them on the truck. And I would never ask somebody to pay this kind of money on special. This is on sale on the flyer. And that's what they're asking for. Mother of Pearl. I, I just, oh my goodness. I don't know. I don't know. If you can find yourself a good jack somewhere, get it. I've heard good good and bad about the Daytona jacks at Harbor Freight. Some people say they're good. Some people say they're not. Um, uh, uh, a buddy of mine, Cass Nichols, who you've seen a bunch of times on this channel on live streams and stuff, 
uh, does not like them. And I tend to take his lead on a lot of stuff when it comes to experience using these things because he's got way more time using tools and stuff than I do. And I, I, I trust his opinion. <sighs> so if there's something in between that you can find that makes it more affordable for you, go right ahead. It's just a little disappointing that that's what's happened to the prices on these. The jacks are excellent quality, but I don't know any jack in the world, any three and a half ton jack that's worth $710. Let's bring it back down to earth with some very reasonably priced digital torque wrenches. You've heard me brag about these in the past and I will continue to do so because the quality and the price on the year wrench 120 XP flex head electronic torque wrenches are excellent. These are perhaps the best quality for the money that you can get in a digital torque wrench. They are about half the price of the Mako and Snap-on ones and uh, way less expensive than the Mac ones. $344.99 for the 3.8 drive torque wrench and $414.99 for the half inch drive. The 3.8 goes 10 to 100 foot pounds. The half inch drive does 25 to 250 foot pounds. They have the 120 XP ratchet head with a three degree swing arc for easy accessibility. They do peak torque angle and peak angle. They also beep, light up, and vibrate when you hit your target torque. And they have a one year warranty. Like every other torque wrench on the market, I think these are fantastic. I recommend them wholeheartedly. They do have a quarter inch drive option as well. It's just not in the flyer. If you need a jumbo set of crow's feet, then V8 has an excellent half inch drive 14 piece set. This runs one in one sixteenth through two inches. And I sell this set regularly to guys that work on transit buses. For $164.99, really hard to beat this deal. Price out similar sets on other brands and compare. And I think you'll find that the V8 stuff uh, with my truck pricing is actually pretty competitive. I know it's way less money than the other tool truck brands. If you need locking pliers, and we call them vice grips as a generic term, but vice grip is actually the brand from Irwin, who has made the locking pliers that we've all grown up with, we know and love. But for $245.70, that's a lot of money for this 10-piece set, isn't it? Compare that to $45 less, you get the Milwaukee set that's got the same configuration of pliers in it. The difference is Milwaukee is slightly beefier because they have this red torque lock feature on the back, which allows you to put a screwdriver sh uh, shaft in there and torque around the handle on, on the uh, pliers to tighten them down even more once you've closed them. What a great feature. So the pliers are a little beefier to handle that extra torque. So you're getting something that's stronger, lifetime warranty, just like the Eurowind Vice Grips have, and it's a whole lot money, whole up, whole lot less money than the Irwin one. So if you need that 10 piece set, grab this one instead. The 10 piece set in this configuration isn't the most popular with automotive guys because it has those C-clamp style pliers in there and mostly guys who work with metal are in, fabric, in fabrication shops are going to be buying those. But if you need all the other sizes, you might just want to you know put up with the C-clamp ones. Uh, there, there are also some very good five-piece sets that Milwaukee has for a lot less money that are also very good for automotive or general use applications. Another price increase. This one I'm also not very happy about because it went up a lot. This 12-piece universal snap ring plier set from K-Tool used to cost $135. How long ago was that, Lindsay? Like last month. Now they're up to $229.99. Yeah, they're made in the USA, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. This one is made by Lang. Lang has a similar set. But boy, that was a huge jump in, in the price overnight. I'm not happy about that, but I am happy with the snap ring pliers, and they're very good quality. They have nice mold with handles on them. They're internal and external. You just unscrew the little pivot point, shift over the jaws, and screw it back down again. So they cover a lot of different applications. The question is, you know, is the price worth it to you? I don't know on this one. I'm not bragging about it, I'll tell you that. I have in the past compared favorably the K-Tool five-piece pry bar set that has an 8, 12, 17, 
25 and 31 inch pry bar to the Mayhew Five Piece Dominator pry bar set that contains a 10, 12, 17, 25, and 31 inch pry bar. They used to cost exactly the same. What was the difference? Nothing. They're both made by Mayhew. One is branded 4K tool, and the K tool one has an 8 inch instead of a 10 inch as its smallest size. But now the price has diverged where they are no longer the same. Now you're spending 25 and like $40 more for the K tool set than you are the Mayhew set. I don't know why. If go with the Mayhew one, don't go with the K tool one on, 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 on this particular offering because you're getting the same pry bar. Both are made in the USA because they're made by Mayhew in the USA. So I don't know what's going on with the pricing or why, why the divergence in pricing just based on the brand. Normally, I would expect to see the K-Tool one being a little bit less, as a matter of fact, because of the volume that K-Tool moves. But clearly that's not the case, so I don't know. Um, so when it comes to five-piece pry bar sets for this flyer cycle, it's Mayhew. A lot of people have been seeing this in the flyer, and... They've, they've said, hey, these look just like the snap-on hammers. They do. I don't know who makes them. I don't know who makes snap-on hammers. I don't know who makes Milwaukee's hammers. For all I know, they're coming out of the same factory or one brand manufactures for the other. I don't know. But these from Milwaukee are a lot less money than this comparably sized snap-on hammers. These are the Dead Blow Ball Peen and the Dead Blow Mallet Style Hammers as well as the steel ball peen hammers. I'm gonna be getting some of these on the truck because the pricing is so good that I think they'll be very popular. So I'm really interested to see these. They have lifetime warranties. I think that uh, if they're like dealing with Milwaukee for all their other warranty stuff I've ever dealt with, be easy as pie. And I'd be very happy to carry these as a result. There's been a price reduction, which is always nice to tell you about. These, these are the very popular adjustable work tables from K-Tool. Uh, I would go back and forth between which brand I put on the truck based on cost. Right now, the K-Tool one is the least expensive. So these are the ones I'm carrying. These adjust from 34 inches to 47 and 3 quarter inches high. They have a nice drawer on them. Four 2-inch swivel casters. Nice rubber matting on the top and three compartments to, to put small items and parts and smaller tools in, as well as a pry bar and screwdriver rack and air tool rack on the back. Green, red, or black are the colors that they come in, and these things are so popular, I always, I always put them on the truck. Now is the time for me to restock, and I'm glad because I can take advantage of this price reduction. And here's another price increase I'm not happy about. I've told you in the past about the wonderful quality product of the K-Tool portable Bluetooth wireless speaker. I think it sounds great. It's nice and heavy duty. Um, I've never had a problem with reliability. And last month, they were $169.99. This month, they're $216.99. So that means I'm not going to be putting them on the trucks at this price. I do have two in inventory right now at the old price, and that's where I'm going to keep it. Until I can find a... a an alternative that sounds just as good that might cost a little bit less or until there's some stability in the pricing on K-Tool, I got to wait for the price to come back down again. And because it's in a quarterly flyer, I'm going to have to wait three months, which is a bummer. Um, unless I want to take a hit every time I sell one and sell at the lower price, which I don't think I can do. <clears throat> so I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of a bummer. I hate to be put in a spot like that to, to not be able to put the products that I want on the truck uh, that I know are popular, uh, but the pricing just just puts it right out of the market. So I don't know, I'll see about these. Maybe I can maybe I can like have a happy medium. Maybe if I increased the price to 180, maybe I'd eat the rest of it or something like that. I don't know, but I, it's a position I don't like being put in. So there's some uh, some good and bad on this flyer cycle. Some stuff that simply is not worth the money, and some stuff that absolutely is worth the money. We've seen some unfortunate price increases. But we've also seen a few price decreases, and I like that because it at least keeps it competitive. And with companies like Milwaukee coming out with things like their band file and their hammers and some other products, I think that it's it's very nice to 
to have a competitive advantage over companies like Snap-on and Mac-O, Mac and Cornwell, or even online shopping for that matter, where I can provide a better level of service than, than those guys do. So this is a pretty good flyer, and it's much larger than the other flyers. It's 162 pages, whereas the other ones usually top out at around 116, 114 pages. So there's way more in this flyer than usual. I have put an, a digital copy on my website, so go to coiltools.com. Right on the homepage is a digital version. You can download a copy for yourself, or you can leaf through it online, and I'll also be posting a link to this video on the website. But since we're already watching the video, you won't need that link. <laughs> So keep watching because we've got all kinds of stuff coming down the line, including more tool haul videos with special after dark features that I know you like. So we're going to be doing some of that as well as some air tool repair videos. So do me a favor and click down here now to subscribe so that you don't miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, use a tool. Don't be one. Yeah.